Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning in as I go through everything you need to know about linear relations for your upcoming test. Well, actually, you'll be relieved to know you only need to know how to do two things. So firstly, if I give you an equation, you need to be able to turn that into a graph. Secondly, if I give you a graph or a table of values, you need to be able to find the rule linking the two variables, usually x and y. So let's start with the first one giving you an equation and you turn it into a graph. So as the name suggests here, we're only looking at linear equations. So an equation is linear, for our purposes, if it can be written in the form y equals something times x plus something. We use y and x because they're that's how we label the axes on the Cartesian plane. So note that you may not be given the equation in this form all the time, but if it's linear, you can write it in that form. So for example, if I were to give you the equation, let's say 4y plus 12x equals 36. It may not look like it, but this in black can be written in this form in blue. To do that, I need to rearrange the equation. I need to get y by itself. So I want to move the 12x over to this side of the equation. So I subtract 12x from both sides. Remember, what you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other. Now, I want to get y by itself, as it is in the blue. So, to undo timesing by 4, I divide by 4. I have to divide everything on this side by 4. 36 divided 4 is 9. Negative 12x divided 4 is negative 3x. Okay? So, this equation and this equation here... And even this equation here, they are all equivalent equations. So I took this equation, I wrote it in this form, so it is definitely linear. So how would you graph something like that? Well, the method we've gone through is you draw up a table of values, choose the x values, find the y values, and then plot them as points. So let's go ahead and graph this. We'll start by drawing up the table of values. So your table of values always looks like this. Now, you choose the x values. So you can always choose these ones, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Okay? I just suggest you always choose them for simplicity. So what we do is we substitute this one, then this one, and so on, into our equation y equals 9 minus 3x. We find the y value. So if x is negative 2 y would be 9 minus 3 times x, which is negative 2. So it ends up being 15. So now we're going to do the same, but we're going to substitute x equals minus 1 into the equation. So if x equals minus 1, then y would be 9 minus 3 times negative 1. So... 9 minus 3 times negative 1 equals positive 12. Then, if x equals 0, y would be 9 minus 3 times 0. So 9 minus 3 times 0 is just 9. So I'll put that here. So when x equals 0, y equals 9. So hopefully now you're starting to see a pattern. Each time that x is going up by 1... We are decreasing y value by 3. So the next two values will be 6 and 3. It always follows a pattern like this when you're doing a table of values for a linear function. That's the definition of a linear function. Each time you increase x by 1, y increases or decreases by the same number. If that's not true, it's not a linear function. Now when we've got our table of values complete, note that each of these columns is a point. So this is the point negative to 15 for example so we can plot that on the Cartesian plane we do that for each of these five points then just join them up so let's draw up our Cartesian plane so I've just ruled up a Cartesian plane so there's basically a number line in two different directions the horizontal axis is always the x-axis and the vertical axis is always the y-axis so I need to make sure that I label the points on this so 2, 4, 6, and so on for y. Now, it doesn't matter so much if the scales aren't exactly the same. So here for the y, each square, I went up by 1. Here, 
it's two squares that I'm going to go up by one. But that's okay. I don't have to have the same scale on the X and Y values. So, of course, on the left-hand side of the x-axis are negative values. This point in the middle, the origin, is 0, 0. So let's plot the points from the table of values. So firstly, x is minus 2, so I go across to minus 2, and I go up to y equals 15, which will be up here. So that point I plotted is the point negative 2, 15. Then I plot negative 1, 12, so I go across to x is negative 1, up to y equals 12. And then 0, 9 will be the point here, 1, 6, and then 2, 3. Now, unless you've done something wrong, these points will lie in a straight line. So once you've got all the points, all you have to do is join them up. So I'm going to do like a rough sketch of that. So you just draw a line through all the points. Your line should have arrows on the end because it is going on forever. That's the definition of a line in maths. So the arrows indicate the line goes on forever. You should also label it with the equation. So this is the graph y equals 9 minus 3x, okay? So that's how you graph any linear function. Table of values, plot the points, and then join them up. So now let's look at the second thing you need to know, which is when you have a graph or table of values, how you come up with the equation. Okay, so let's now try and find the equation of this line in black. So what I'm going to do is draw up a table of values, but the points will already be there for me. So I've got, of course, an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So I'll just put a few of these in. So the first point here, I'll start with the leftmost point, is x is minus 2, y is minus 2. Our point here, we've got x is minus 1, y is 0, and so on. So how am I going to use this to figure out what the equation linking x and y is? Well, I told you before that for any linear equation, and of course this is linear because the graph is a straight line, I can write it in the form y equals something times x plus something. So all I need to do is figure out which numbers go in that box. So I sort of mentioned this before. The number in front of x actually determines by how much the y value is increasing. So each time I increase x by 1, what's happening is y is increasing by 2. So that number goes in the first box. So 2 is the number that y increases by each time x increases. In other words, each time we go across 1, from minus 1 to 1, for example, we go up 2. We go across 1 and up 2 cross 1, and we'll go up 2, and so on. So 2 is also called the gradient. So that's the number that goes in the first box, the number that goes in front of x. The number that goes in front of, in the other box, is the y-intercept. So the first box was the gradient, the amount by which y increases each time x increases by 1. The number that goes in the second box is the y-intercept. So that is the y-value when x equals 0. In other words, it's where it hits the y-axis, which is this one going up and down like that. So you can see clearly from the graph that the line goes through the y-axis at y equals 2. So 2 goes in there also. So the equation of the line is y equals 2x plus 2. So that shows you how you do it from a graph and a table of values. Let's look at another example. Okay, so let's now look at the line in red. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw up a table of values for this. So I have my x value and my y value. Now here, there are only three points, but that's okay. It turns out you only need two points, and that will completely define a line. If there are any two points plotted in the Cartesian plane, there's one and only one line that will go through them. So the first point here, I'll start with the left one again. So the x-coordinate is minus 2, and the y-coordinate is 5. Then the next point here, I have x equals 0, y equals 1. And then the next point, I have x equals 2, y equals negative 3. Okay? Now, the difference here is that each time I have gone across a point, x isn't increasing by 1, it's actually increasing by 2. Right? So I'm going to do the same idea. So this... 
is going to be y equals something times x plus something. But the gradient, the number that goes in the first box, it has to be the amount y is increasing every time x goes up by 1. It can't, so I can't just put a 4 in here because y is going down by 4 each time. can't just put a 4. So each time x goes up by 2, y goes down by 4. So therefore, each time x goes up by 1, y would go down by 2. Because 4 over 2 equals 2. That's the gradient. So I need to put a 2 in this box. If I increased x by 1, y would go down by 2. So we can see that on the graph here. If I go across by 1, I go down from 5 to 3. I go down 2. So that's why 2 goes in there. It has to be the amount y is increasing or decreasing x time each time x goes up by 1. Okay. So the number that goes in this box here is again the y value when x equals 0. But... There's something we've done wrong here. It can't be positive 2x plus 1. Because y is decreasing rather than increasing, the number in front of x is negative. And remember, a negative number is just directed number. It just gives it direction. So negative 2x means that y is going down by 2 each time x increases by 1. So this is the final equation. y equals negative 2x plus 1. So the number in front of x, if it's in the form y equals something times x plus something, so this number here will be greater than 0, i.e. positive, if the line is leaning to the right like that, and it will be less than 0 if the line is leaning to the left. So make sure you know that. All right, thank you for tuning in. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.